Well, we've been talking about the transition from taking electrons from a pi bond and making them into a lone pair. Now let's talk about the other two transitions. So basically, so far, we've been talking about making a new lone pair. And we saw that when you make a new lone pair, you don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. When you make a new lone pair out of a pi bond, there's no way to exceed an octet. But we're not going to be so lucky when we form pi bonds. Now, you can see there's two ways that are legal to form pi bonds. You can form a pi bond out of a lone pair, or you can form a pi bond out of another pi bond. Well, when you form a pi bond, you have to worry about exceeding an octet. When you form a new pi bond, that definitely could exceed an octet. So how can you make sure when you're forming a pi bond that you're not exceeding an octet? Well, one good way is to form the pi bond with a carbocation, because the carbocation had too few electrons. So when it gains the pi bond, we don't need to worry that it's going to be having more than an octet, because the carbocation already had too few electrons. So it's okay to form a pi bond with a carbocation. It's okay to form a, car uh, a pi bond with a carbocation. Now, technically, it also would be okay to form a pi bond with any other atom that had an incomplete octet. Technically, it would be okay to form a pi bond not just with a carbocation, but with any other atom that had an incomplete octet. But actually, um, any other atom with an incomplete octet forming resonance structures, that hardly ever comes up um, in organic chemistry. So that's so rare, we're really not even going to worry about it. Technically speaking, you could form a pi bond with any atom that had an incomplete octet, but except for carbocations, that's really never going to come up. So really, we're just going to focus on carbocations. So we don't need to worry about exceeding octet as long as we're forming the pi bond with a carbocation. Now there's one other way that um, you could form a pi bond and not exceed an octet. It's okay to form a new pi bond on an atom as long as it's losing one of its old pi bonds. It's okay to form a new pi bond as long as the atom is losing one of its old pi bonds, because that way it's gaining electrons on one side, but losing electrons on the other. So here are the two legal ways to form a new pi bond in resonance. Now remember uh, one more time, in a sense, um, we're not really forming a new pi bond, because that suggests that the molecule is changing in some way. And remember that in resonance we're not really changing, we're not forming a new pi bond, we're just drawing a structure with a pi bond where the old picture didn't have a pi bond. And we know the true structure is a blend. It's a blend of one picture with the pi bond and one picture without it. But again, we're going to ignore that for the most part and just pretend like we're actually making changes. It's just easier to talk that way. Okay, so um, if you form a new pi bond, that is going to exceed an octet unless you form the pi bond with a carbocation because that had an incomplete octet, or it's okay to form a new pi bond as long as the atom um, that's gaining the pi bond is also losing a pi bond. All right, so you can form a new pi bond either with a carbocation or with an atom that's also losing a pi bond. I, I should mention that we're covering a lot of different rules here for what's legal and what's not legal in drawing resonance structures, but this is the most important. This is the rule that people tend to violate over and over and get wrong when they're drawing resonance structures. The biggest mistake that people make in drawing resonance structures is exceeding an octet when they, not, when they draw a new pi bond. The most common mistake that students make is exceeding an octet when they draw a new pi bond. So this is a rule that you want to pay especially close attention to and try the examples very carefully. So let's decide whether this is a legal electron pushing arrow for resonance. Remember that for every po uh, problem that I pose, you should pause the video and try it on your own before proceeding with the video. Well, here we're forming a pi bond. The head of the arrow is um, in the bond region, so we know we're forming a pi bond. Anytime you form a pi bond, you have to worry about exceeding an octet. And there's only two ways to form a pi bond without exceeding an octet. Um, we could be donating to a carbocation, but we're not. Or we could be breaking this pi bond down here, but we're not. So this is not legal. This is not legal. It's going to end up breaking the octet rule. So we can see this is legal. So what do you have to do to check whether you're breaking the octet rule? Well, it's actually quite simple. If you're forming a pi bond, then if you're not forming the pi bond with a carbocation, and if you're not forming the pi bond with an atom that's also losing a pi bond, then you messed up. So this is illegal. That won't work. How can we fix this? Well, 
Remember, it, this would be fine as long as this atom was also losing a pi bond. Well, no sweat. We can just use this arrow to make this atom also lose the pi bond. And now, we know that we don't have to worry about exceeding an octet. Um, there's no way you can exceed an octet if you're both gaining and losing a pi bond. So this is perfectly legal. Uh, but wait a, wait a second, don't we have to worry about exceeding an octet here? No, because this is forming a lone pair. I've erased it from the board, but remember that when you form a lone pair, there's no way that you can break, uh, that you can exceed an octet. So you can see that these two transitions are different from this transition. When you're forming a lone pair, you don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. We've already seen previously there's no way that a new lone pair can exceed an octet. But when you're forming pi bonds, that's when you have to worry. So we don't need to worry here. So notice that this is very useful for making room for pi bonds. If we need to make room on an atom for a new pi bond, it's very useful to shift the old pi bond into a lone pair, because we don't need to worry that that would break the octet rule. We don't need to worry that that would exceed an octet. So this is legal. Is this legal? Well, here again, we're forming a pi bond. We can see that because the head of the arrow is pointing to the sigma bond. So again, we're forming a pi bond. Uh, now, when you form a pi bond, you have to be in one of these two cases. It's, um, when you're forming a pi bond, you have to be forming it with a carbocation or an atom that's losing a pi bond. Well, here we are forming the pi bond with a carbocation, so this is also legal. So these are the two examples of legal transitions. These are the two things that are legal. It's perfectly legal to form a new pi bond with a carbocation because it's got room. We can form the new pi bond here because this carbocation was electron deficient. It's got room. And we can form a new pi bond with an atom that's losing a pi bond. But these are the only two ways to form a pi bond. So again, when do we know we're making a pi bond? When the head of the arrow is pointing to the bond. When the head of the arrow is pointing to the bond, you're forming a pi bond. So you better be forming the pi bond with a carbocation or with somebody who's also losing a pi bond. When are we in this case? When the head of the arrow is pointing directly at the atom. If the head of the arrow is pointing directly at the atom, we're forming a lone pair. Then we don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. We've already seen that. So the tricky case is when the head of the arrow is pointing to a bond. Remember I said that this is the most common mistake people make. So you have to be very careful when the head of an arrow is pointing to a bond. You have to be very careful when the head of an arrow is pointing to a bond. Because that's when you're forming a pi bond that could potentially exceed an octet, unless you're careful to form a pi bond only in these two cases. On the other hand, we don't need to be nearly as worried when the head of the arrow is pointing directly at an atom because when the head of the arrow is pointing directly at an atom, it's forming a lone pair. And that couldn't possibly exceed an octet, um, no matter what.